Sometimes random events trigger a chain of significant changes that no one expects. I stumble upon the number 2013 in many of my leather brand reviews. Most of the successful challengers in the luxury leather world were founded in that year. Not in 2012, not in 2014. This led me down a rabbit hole of research and took over a month involving extensive digging and interviewing with people to understand what was happening in the luxury leather world. There are about four or five super labels that are famous for their leather goods, which are very expensive and perceived as status symbols. However, some of those brands are engaging in somewhat unusual practices that they haven't attempted at this scale before. Today, we're going to talk about Chanel price increases. Yes, yet again, I have an article here from Business of Fashion. It was just published now and it reads Chanel increases prices in China as concerns about luxury demand mount. I really think they're trying to eliminate the middle class or just the average person from being able to afford right. their bags. They really want to make sure it is maybe more exclusive. More the Only the yeah. elite, the truly wealthy, can afford these bags. Louis Vuitton is opening a hotel for the first time ever in Paris. This venture marks the expansion of the world's largest luxury brand into the hotel restaurant industry. Legacy houses, which have long enjoyed profitable positions in the market, are now trying new strategies to secure their standing as making high quality bags becomes common ground for newcomers. Luxury labels realize they must offer something beyond quality to maintain their esteemed positions. Some choose to increase perceived exclusivity by raising prices, while others opted to elevate the customer experience to a new level. The responses to these new strategies have been mixed, to say the least. For decades now, these luxury labels create the notion that to own a high quality leather bag, one must spend thousands of dollars. This narrative was unchallenged as these behemoth brands dominated the retail network and advertising spaces. Most of the market believed these crafts were of exceptional quality and expensive due to the superior leather and craftsmanship. But then something happened in 2013, as if a switch was flipped. A plethora of new brands entered the leather market, producing leather goods as good as those made by luxury labels, with the same materials by the same artisans from the same workshops, but at a fraction of the luxury price tags. This was made possible by the internet's transformative influence. One way to increase your net worth is to use the internet for all it's worth. Everywhere you look, computer savvy people are doing just that. If you are an entrepreneur, you need to think like one, make decisions like one, plan like one, and use the internet properly. Social media is a vital part of promoting your business. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Yelp, Foursquare, LinkedIn. Some creative entrepreneurs realized they could produce luxury leather goods of comparable quality and deliver them directly to you consumers using the online models, bypassing the substantial investments and expenditures previously required. I have examined many of these challenger brands on this channel, witnessing the incredible quality they offer at affordable prices. But the intriguing question remains, why did all these successful entrants started in 2013? Was this a coordinated effort against the luxury giants or was something else at play? The more I researched, the more curious I became, as these entrepreneurs were isolated individuals or teams from different parts of the world attempting the same thing at the almost same time without being aware of each other. This seemed like an instance of invisible inspiration or knowledge being unlocked. Regardless of this phenomenon, 2013 feels like the year when the leather gods decided it was time for a significant change in how we perceive and experience leather luxury. Fast forward 5-6 years from 2013, as it took some time for these new brands to test their value propositions and get reliable market feedback. It was a jackpot though. Some of these brands grew so rapidly that many of the established labels had to take notice of this uprising. It posed a significant threat to their future, necessitating action before it was too late. Now, some legacy labels acted smartly and strategically while others scrambled helplessly. Louis Vuitton doubled down on enriching the consumer experience, pushing their brand beyond the competition of merely making good bags to their strongest area, which new entrants cannot easily rival. Chanel, on the other hand, chose the simplest strategy of raising prices. They significantly increased their biannual price hikes, 
aiming to create an outrageous level of perceived exclusivity. Their hope was that only the super wealthy would carry their products, maintaining the allure across the market while keeping profits the same with fewer sales. So this video is going to be quite the story and it is about one of my Chanel bags. I got three bags of this brand and two of the three I've had a horrible experience with. It's been quite a roller coaster trying to repair those bags and the customer service that I get in contact with is also just not acceptable. People like us who really save up to buy this kind of bag that we intend on using for years and years to come and maybe pass on to our children. This amount of problems that you get when it comes to quality, when it comes to customer service, when it comes to repair, it's just unacceptable. But this may backfire on Chanel, it seems like. I'm not sure where this is all heading or how it will play out in the long run, but as a consumer who appreciates high quality products at fair prices, I'm incredibly happy. I was never a consumer of perceived luxury and now I'm pleased to see it becoming more possible for like-minded individuals to enjoy top-notch leather goods without paying for marketing fluff. I will happily watch these strategy wars in the leather market and report my findings to you all so we keep leather taming going. Exciting days await my friends. And if you enjoyed this coup in the luxury empire, you may want to check out this video right here, which highlights one of the best examples of these uprising brands from the mysterious cohort of 2013. And as always, until next time, stay leather taint.